Oh. Tim, you want to lead us off? Hang on one second. Chandler just started the recording, so could you just do the minutes again, Mark? Sorry. Yeah, well no done, problem. Chandler. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Patricia, have you had a chance to read the minutes? Yes, <laughs> yes I have. A, I'll look for a motion. I make a motion to accept the minutes. One second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's been passed. We'll go on from there, Tim. Okay, very good. Well, good morning, all. Um, it's been a little while since we've met as a group, but members of the team know that we've met individually on quite a few occasions just to keep things going. And so we are officially up and running in the channels that we've designated. Um, and those that we're not up and running in, we've got reasons why that we'll discuss today. Um, so everybody received the email I sent, I take it, that has everything kind of choreographed. We've got 10 minute updates uh, each channel so that we can keep everything uh, from a time standpoint um, in sync and under control. So um, that said, uh, Chandler, you are up first and uh, you've got uh, roughly 10 minutes or so just to update the uh, the team as to what's going on with our LinkedIn initiatives. So for LinkedIn, so far we've posted three times and we have about 160, 170 followers on LinkedIn. Um, and I checked out our average post engagement and it's about 150 people per post. Um, then that's what does about, that mean? What does that mean, Chandler? Uh, the average post impression, which means like the average um, amount of people see that post. So 150 people per post, we know that we'll see the post. Doesn't mean that it's gonna be all the people who will further Wallingford, not necessarily, but it could just be Tom check looking at it. And then, so it's yeah. not necessarily some, it's not someone who's going to buy like real estate in Wallingford. I mean, he could, but. Um, Does that mean that 150 people had to initiate some effort to look at it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, good. Um, then this is more interesting for you, Tim, I guess, is the click on our website is about 22% of what our last, like last month engagement was. So um, it was 18 people clicked on our website link from the followers we have. So the, the LinkedIn is definitely driving some traffic over there. Um, and so I looked at the average engagement Wallingford's page has, which is about 15, 14 or 15% and I looked at our the industry standard just to compare and it's about 12 to 13 percent so you're you're right in in a good area also with um sales navigator Jack is working on that and he has a list of 222 people saved who are all members within a specific region like our little region of CCIM and SIOR people and they're all second degree connections so what that means is like they have some connection with Tim so it's a common point that um, that Tim could make saying like hey you're part of SSI S I O R so we should connect and it, it would be it would make leads easier to connect with Very good. any questions so Chandler, the uh, sales navigator tool, I see Anthony is on the call now and, and he's the expert, but uh, the sales navigator tool. So Jack is uh, going out, he's looking and searching for, you know, categorically those New England states, in, including New York, New Jersey. Um, he's looking by category right now, the SAOR S and CCIMs, which we know are the commercial real estate groups are, are, you know, primary target just to get our feet wet. And then we are going to individually message those 222 plus people with a message that I've uh, um, I sent out, I think over the weekend and then Chandler, you and uh, your team had a couple of comments. So we'll get together on that just to refine that message. But then we're gonna uh, send, uh, Jack will take the time to individualize every single one of those messages um, to the CCIMs and SAORs from me so that um, we can take an, um, you know, just talk about again Wallingford and why they should consider connecting with us and keeping their eyes open and making those introductions. So I think we're well on our way there, right? Yes. And we're still in our first free month of Sales Navigator, uh, which that clock is ticking. So uh, just for the benefit of the committee, so it's eighty bucks a month thereafter, and um, we'll we'll ride that horse and see where it takes us. 
Anything else to report, Chandler? Not that I could see. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, I know Shay is on the line. You're part of the team as well, Shay. You want to just talk about, uh, I got a whole bunch of LinkedIn messages over the weekend, so I know you were working. Yeah, um, so basically I've just been reaching out. We decided that Tim's connections on LinkedIn would be um, a good like resource to use to get followers for the Wallingford page. So um, we decided to reach out to all of his followers and just kind of like introduce him and send them, them a link. And that ended up getting us a lot of our followers. So that's kind of how we got most of the followers. So any thoughts um, from the committee? Um, we've used a couple of from the desk of Joe columns. We thought that it would be best if we um, you know, not hit with our strongest messages until we've built a following of, you know, hundreds, I hope. Uh, well, I get we have hundreds now. We need a lot more, many more hundreds before we start sending out our, our strongest messages. So, um, so we've been going a little bit light, um, basically introductions, and then, you know, again, a couple of Desk of Joe columns. And, um, and what was the third thing we sent out, Chandler? Um, we had two desk of Joe's and then a welcome message. Oh, the welcome message. Okay. Yep. All right. So, um, any thoughts from the committee comments, um, are certainly welcome. Okay. All right. Chandler, anything else you want to share? No, no, not really. Okay. All right. Well, I think the message there is that, um, LinkedIn, which you know we've identified as probably our, our primary resource to reach beyond the state of Connecticut. I mean, throughout the state of Connecticut, but, but beyond as well. Uh, that's going to be our primary tool. So uh, that's why we've got three people on that team as opposed to two on most others. And um, we just need to keep um, you know coming up with good messaging and and uh, and stay active. So. And Chandler's been holding my feet to the fire there. So, okay, hearing nothing. Um, Shay, you want to talk about email marketing? Yeah. Um, so I just have like a little slide. Um, okay, so this is just email, the email marketing. So I'm just going to show like what we've sent and um, the kind of just like analytics from each of the emails. Um, so this was the first one we sent out. So it was winning in Wallingford. It was just um, kind of like introducing what we're doing and kind of just telling um, who we have currently on our email list, which we sent this to um manufacturing companies real estate media and other which um which other is just like anybody that's not in a specific category um so kind of just like why wallingford um we had this button that brought people to the website and then we had companies winning in wallingford and then we just had like follow us on our new linkedin and then that's another link to our website um, so if we just go back, you can see how we did. Um, so this was sent, this is also just for the manufacturing results. Um, just because of the way I had to send out the emails, it's in different groups. So I just chose which one I thought like best represented, um, all of them. So we sent it to 96 people, um, about 40% opened it. Oops. Um, and some people, total opens was 127. So that means people could go back and open it again. Um, and then if you see at the bottom, it says clicks by URL. So to the Wallingford um, website, total clicks was 13. Unique clicks was seven. So unique clicks are the new clicks, like different people clicking on them. So a total of seven different people clicked on them. And then 13 clicks means somebody could have gone back and clicked on the link multiple times. Um, and then we also got some traffic to our LinkedIn from that email too. And then this email was 
I'm going to have Brenna can talk about this more because me and Brenna have kind of been working together because she had some information um, to send to businesses about the college career fairs. Um, so this is just kind of like what it looks like, but Brenna can talk more about what she's been sending. Um, so this was just kind of like informing businesses of when local colleges um, career fairs were. So we sent that out the following Monday. Um, so this one um, these are the results for the real estate group. Um, so we had about 23% open it. Um, participants, uh, yeah, so this is just showing, I mean, there was really nothing to click in this. It was more just informational, um, but that was the results for that one. And then we also had connecting with other college career center offices. Um, so I'll have Brenna talk about that again, but just to show you, it looks like that. Um, so this was her, one of Brenna's messages. And then for this, we had about 30% who opened it. Um, participant, three participants clicked, total clicks was nine. So you can just see all the information there. We also got some traffic to our website and um, LinkedIn from that campaign as well. And then this last one was manufacturer's vaccine information that Tim sent me. So this was just um, information on how, on how there was like a Zoom meeting about how um, manufacturing the workforce, the manufacturing workforce would um, be able to get the vaccine soon. So we just sent out this flyer and then we included the Zoom link. And then these two links bring us to our LinkedIn page and the website and then if you could just go back you can see we got some people um who went to the um zoom thing so we had six people click on the zoom link and then you can just see all the information there um about 34 percent open the email and yeah so that's kind of just how our um email's been working um, each time we've sent it out, we've sent it to media, manufacturing, real estate, and other, um, other than the vaccine information, that one just went to the manufacturers, but those were the ones that we decided that were like the best groups to be receiving it. Um, but yeah. So just for the uh, uh, committee's edification. So uh, each time we have a message, we, uh, Shay and I, and in this case, uh, because several of them were driven by Brenna, we would collaborate, decide which groups, because our email marketing list is broken into categories, as you've heard Shay reference. You know, we have manufacturers, we have real estate professionals, we have uh, government officials, we have other economic developers, we have, and then there's the other category. So we've got it categorized that way. Um, so we would determine the message, we would approve the content of the message, uh, sometimes just with a couple of edits here and there, and then determine which uh, target audience we want to try to reach with the message. And then, um, uh, you know, between Shay and Brenna, Shay's the actual one that hits the send button in most cases, and uh, Brenna's had uh, obviously some activity that she'll talk about on the, uh, the college side. So Shay, great job on the statistics. Um, so we can track and see what's working, what's effective. Um, and uh, it, it, it says to me, I, I've noticed that of the 95 that we sent out in two different emails, we had 90 good deliveries. So that says our list is pretty clean as well. So, yeah. um, uh, but it also tells me that, I mean, there are thousands of email addresses in this town of businesses that, you know, there's over 2000 businesses. So we have, you know, our, our list needs to be, you know, grown and, um, you know, again, for the committee's edification, when we bring on that part-timer in this office, which is getting pretty darn close, that's one of the big uh, things that that part-timer needs to do is, is really start to grow that email list so that we can just reach more people in a more timely way. So, Brenna, Shay referred you to, to you a couple of times. Is there anything you want to add to her presentation? Um, I The one thing I will add is I didn't get anyone reaching out to me about those emails, uh, which is, a uh, little disappointing, especially in the career fair one. Hopefully people, that means people understood the information I gave them and were able to just do it on their own because I did give them like my email to email me back if they had questions or anything. Um, but other than that, I think it went 
uh, pretty well. They kind of, the titles kind of speak for themselves. One had information about career fairs and career events going on at some of the schools. The other one had information about how to get on uh, like the applications that specific colleges use to get their students' jobs. So as, as you um, take a look at the message itself, the way it was structured, um, where the response was, you know, was it the beginning of the message, the end of the message, the middle of the message? As you say, I guess we can conclude that maybe that subject matter wasn't of great priority or interest to the recipient. Um, but sometimes you, we can look and maybe draw the conclusions. We, we, we refine our next message. Um, maybe we'd make them shorter. Maybe we'd make them, I don't know. But I would encourage you all as we send messages, if we're not getting the responses we want, then you know what, what marketers do is evaluate the content of the message uh, just, to, just to see. And it could be that, you know, right now, no one has an interest in going to career fairs, or it, it, most of them are virtual, but nonetheless. But I'm a little surprised that some of them wouldn't have connected with some of the college uh, con you know, contacts you've made. So I agree with you there. That's, that's a fantastic resource for some of these companies. Yeah, I mean, we don't have a great way of knowing whether they did contact with them. A couple of the colleges did have links, but most of those links, one of those, there, I think there were four schools that had career events that I talked about. Two of them had links. One of them wasn't for the career fair. It was for a um, class kind of about how their career fair is going to happen. So you didn't necessarily have to click on it to attend the career fair. And the other link was actually like, if you want to attend this career fair, like this is the link to do it. Um, so they could have done the ones without the link without us knowing. We don't really have a way of knowing that. Okay, very good. Shay, how do you feel about uh, the status of the email marketing campaign? You think we've got a little bit of, of uh, you know, cadence with it right now, or? Yeah, I mean, I think it's going okay for a start. Um, I mean, we've been sending them out every week. Um, I don't know if we should maybe, I mean, I think there definitely could be things that we could do better. Um, just seeing like the response rates, the click rates aren't bad. Um, it's good that we're getting like traffic and stuff to our website and LinkedIn. Um, but I definitely think that it could be better, but I'm not really sure. Um, maybe like you said, by like making the messages shorter or making the information maybe more relevant to each group that we're sending it out to and maybe even more like personalized to like, like, oh, like manufacturing companies get manufacturing emails, like real estate get real estate emails. So then maybe you would see a better response rate. Um, but yeah, I think it's, I think it's going um, as good as it can for a start. Okay, very good. And again, the tracking, I'm uh, very impressed with the tracking. So, you know, by message, I know as a marketing committee, we've talked about because we obviously your municipality and everything is very public. If someone six months from now talks about, you know, a, uh, uh, an email that was sent out, we'll have a means of tracking it because you've got the, the data. We know what was sent, when, when it was sent, et cetera. So uh, very good. Tim, can I ask a question? Absolutely. Um, one is with the uh, town council, and it, I, I'm assuming they're under government, that section under government, or are they not? They are, so are you asking if, if I've got the town council emails under the government section? Yes. I do not. Okay, are they, are they on any email section? When I send them emails, typically it's directed specifically or directly to the counselors. So what happens is we send it to the town clerk. The town clerk acts as the secretary and recording secretary for the council. So anything we send to the council, we send to the town clerk. The town clerk then sends to the council. So we have a conduit. We just, as a rule, don't send them the general messages, but that doesn't mean we can. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that uh, at, at some given point in the future, we're going to want to be in front of the town council for whatever reason. I'm mm -hmm. talking about EDC now. Um, and I think this is such a positive step that we're making, even if it's a small step at this stage of the game. And if we can get them in on the ground floor of what's happening, um, I think it may behoove us to benefit from that in the future. 
So no matter what it is, it, it doesn't have to, it could be the career fair, for instance, where mm -hmm. they may or may not have any interest in the career fair, but at least they see what's happening and it's going out there. So it may be just an automatic, if it comes out to us, which it has been as the marketing committee and the EDC commission, then why don't we just do it out to the, um, to the council and, and get them on board. You may want to do a little prelude note to it, you know, just saying FYI, this is what we're doing, that kind of thing. But uh, it's something that we should consider as a committee anyway. For sure. I think, and they, one, sorry. Go ahead. I think one thing we had talked about um, in the past is that maybe in the spring, I'm thinking about, you know, April, May, Mm -hmm. uh, maybe maybe April is the best time. So at that point, you know, we, we've gotten some, again, some cadence. We've gotten some experience. We've been messaging for a couple of months. I'd love to have some of the team members come to a town council meeting. Now, the presumption was maybe by then we'd be meeting in person, but it's just looking less and less likely all the time. Right. I think it's great experience for our, our uh, SMT, suit marketing team, to, uh, to get in front of a council. Um, but it's also an opportunity for the council to see, you know, what, what a quality job everybody's done on, on you know, working and building out all these channels. So, uh, but that that would be an engagement, and then at that point we can you know, we'd have some data to share. So that's that's I, get, I look at that and say that's that's one way. But the other thing is is what you're saying, Mark, is as we evaluate messages, there are some that may be very um, appropriate to send to the council, and we'll certainly uh, we'll certainly do that. Yeah, the reason I say that is because we're trying to build a base here, and uh, they are just another group of people who have a base to themselves. Yeah. And if they're engaged in this, um, I, I'm reminded of uh, Craig Fishbein sends out almost weekly, maybe even twice a week, yeah. messages from the state of Connecticut. You know, what's happening? Roads are closing, or they're doing vaccinations at this site, or, I mean, yeah. he sends out a, any information that's being disseminated by the state, he usually passes that on to his constituency. And I think that's a great idea. So in a way, we could do the same thing. You know, as things are happening in the marketplace, as things are going, if the council knows this, then why not have them pass it on to who, people that they know, you know, that type of thing. And, they all, and many of them have businesses. So, you know, get them involved in the, in, in the businesses and they'll be set. I know I receive the information because I'm on the EDC, but I've got to get my uh, HR person on for G&G. &G. So when a message goes out to a business, although I see it and I pass it on or I may not pass it on, the HR person will get it direct. So, oh, there's a college fair. Let me go get somebody, you know, let me, let me look into this, you know, that type of thing. Yep. We get a better response on that. And another thing is from a wording aspect, um, maybe we at some later point, we wanna put in something and it won't relate to the colleges as much, uh, but uh, Brenna can work with this, is um, the Hubcap. The Hubcap does their thing on, on conduits for uh, workforce and workforce alliance going in through manufacturing. Um, maybe we wanna update the public about Hubcap from that and see if the responses to Hubcap are different than the responses that we're getting from the college fairs. Sure, and it, it gives us you know two things to look at anyway. As, as a yep. comparison, yeah, that's a, that's actually everybody uh, make note because that's a good message to because uh, there is a I had a meeting Friday morning with uh, Dr. Menzo, our superintendent of schools, and they're talking about the next uh, um, job fair, um, so what they call the pipeline program at Hubcap. So that's that's a message that we need to get out, and they're putting together the uh, the pieces for that. Sounds great. Thank you. I think that's those are great examples, Mark, of of uh, how you know you, you build the infrastructure, and then you know you can just start layering stuff on top of it, right? Yeah. So here we go. So you know the students, you know, again, uh, take a bow. We built out the infrastructure. You built out the infrastructure. Now the concepts of messages and so forth are just going to start to you know, start to flow. So uh, very good. Sam, I see you've joined us. Um, it do doesn't look like you're, you're you're in a Pullman car on the way to New York. So yeah, we decided to leave a little later. So I oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sam was willing to take and join this meeting from the train on our way to the city. But <laughs> all right, very good. Um, anything else? Uh, Shay, anything else on email marketing? No, that's all I had. Okay, very good. Nice, nice job. Thanks. Um, Callum, you want to take over? Sure. 
So uh, as everyone knows, the new uh, landing page for the Wallingford um, business section recently launched. Uh, and so since then, uh, we've had a chance to go through and look at it. And I think just in general, it looks great. And it, it's really kind of night and day, especially compared to um, you know other, other pages on the website. It's a much stronger page overall and I think makes a much better experience and first impression of the Longford EDC. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think we only, we only had a couple um, small questions about um, a couple of small things, but apart from that, I think just by and large, it's a pretty significant improvement. And um, yeah, I, I, think, I think they did a good job of implementing our, our work on the website. Um, I think a lot of the um, content that we have goes very well with all of the outreach programs that everybody's been working with. I was looking at Shave email marketing and things like that. So I think it aligns very well and everything's kind of coming together nicely. Very good. Any comments from commissioners on the, the look of the new page? I think it looks sharp. Very nice. I, just pulled, I just pulled it up. Yeah, on ditto too and it's definitely works mobily mobily optimized great i love the consistency of the look of all everything that you guys are putting out branding is great awesome well done so uh we had we had one question about one of the sections um so if if you look at the the page the live page we were just wondering where the idea for the the slider with the uh, images of the uh, of the different businesses came from um, can you, can you show your screen count? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I'm just, I'm just on the live page right now. Um, so yeah. the only question we had was, we were just wondering where the idea for this section came from and, um, if there was, I guess, like a, a function behind it that wasn't like, um, like immediately obvious. But. Um, well, I guess I'd say if it wasn't your concept, I'm not sure where it came from. Uh, maybe the, maybe the people at web solutions, uh, um, came up with that. Um, I know Lynn and I work with web solutions, uh, in basically translating, your work so um so what happens behind that refresh my memory if you click on the, what is it does it take anywhere is it just a no it's it looks like it's just an image slider but um we were just i mean we just had questions about it because it, it, it wasn't on the the original design that we supplied but okay. um and we, we didn't know if this was something that you guys uh decided on doing with them or if they had just taken the initiative to do on their own it's not very appealing to the eye, like the colors and everything, and the dead. It, it, it kind of interrupts the flow of it's totally information, and it, it would make a little bit more sense if it was closer to the testimonials because we have testimonials from some of these businesses. But I think even without the image slider, everything standing alone would be I'm a little bit more concise and make more sense in terms of the user flow. I completely agree with you. I feel like we just entered another site. <laughs> Visually, yeah, and I'm very visual. Yeah, I think it's kind of confusing. Yep. Like it doesn't, it, there's no context to it. Um, and so it's kind of unclear what you're looking at. It, it doesn't say whether or not these are companies that are even in Wallingford. Um, and just in terms of um, website best practices, I, I haven't seen, um, you know, image sliders on their own like this before in a way that I thought worked well, so. I, I just wasn't sure. Um, I don't know. I, I think that it might be better off without this section, but wanted to uh, see if there's another reason for it. Yeah, I think that the, the page that you have that shows just the names of the companies that are within, I think there were five or six or eight of them uh, on one page. They're right here. Yeah, I, I think that was great. You know, just show the one page. These companies are in Wallingford, you know, that type of thing. I think that's fabulous. I agree with you when you start taking actual pictures of the front end of each of those companies, I think it, it, it disrupts the whole flow of what you're trying to do. 
you know, if anything, it, it might be an idea to use the slider, maybe have the, um, the company's logo and the quote in the slider. So there's a little identification of the business and, and who they are. Um, but I agree the, uh, the top slider with the, uh, the images and they're not even crisp images. I, I could tell, um, on my website for the hops and monster image when web solutions went in, because I, I see who visits my site and they're actually, they're a former vendor of ours. Uh, so they visited the site to snip that off of the, uh, off of the, uh, the website. Cause you could tell by the image, it's not very crisp and it's been blown up. Yeah, there's, there's 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 a couple of pictures off of a site that I built that I've noticed and some yeah. pictures I've seen taken. Yeah. So yeah, I think a good compromise in that case then would be just taking the logos and putting them on the existing testimonial slider. But even without yeah. that, as I think we're all kind of in agreement that the photo slider is I not agree. necessary. No, I mean, if, if it was going to be done, it'd have to be done a lot better than this. But I, I just don't think, you're right, the flow isn't there. You guys have done a great job to have it just interrupted with, with this. Yeah, and I mean, this is the one small comment we had. I think the rest of the site looks great. Um, so yeah, I, I think just removing this one section would make the rest of it that much better. I'm glad you guys caught this. Very good. So my, my takeaway from this is that first, great conversation, great observations by all. So my takeaway is that um, to have perhaps a company logo in with the testimonial uh, would give more recognition and identity to the testimonial. Yeah, especially yep. if that's what the intention of their, like the slider was, if that's the intention, then I think that would be a better way to do it. Yeah, okay. All right, got it. Very good. So cool. Sam, um, you, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Colin. So I was just going to say, uh, I, I didn't have any other comments. So um, Sam, unless you had other comments. So Sam, could you talk to us about tracking? So, you know, we've got, mm -hmm. we're aiming all these, these channels, you know, at the website. So how do we, how do we do a before? Do we have a before picture at this point and yeah. how do we start tracking our effectiveness? So the good thing about Google analytics is you can go back and see at any point in time that you've um, had it set up with the website. You can say, I wonder what um, the drop off rate was in November of 2019 or November of 2020. And we did that before we even started making any sort of design. And if you remember, I believe it was around like 70% drop off rate, which is very high. And um, so we have that benchmark established. And then the next step would just be for continuous um, measurement, keeping an eye on that drop off rate. and the intention of this new design would be that that would be lower than 70%. So any percentage lower than that is a great improvement. And um, obviously we talked to you, Tim, about the, the end goal is to get more people calling you and to get your phone ringing a little bit more. So that's the ultimate measurement that you'll be able to see. Right. Right. Um, and that also relies heavily on how the, the digital outreach continues to go. And I think you guys had a great idea to just kind of reach out to different connections on LinkedIn and, and actually um, making that, com like starting that conversation in the direct messaging instead of just posting. Posting is really important um, to establish that presence on the, the Wallingford site and create credibility um, and just exist there, but also creating your own outreach that will get them to drive back to the website if need be, or directly make a phone call to Tim without even needing to go through that website. Okay, very good. You know, I don't want to put uh, both you and Callum on the spot, but um, since we have the committee together, both of you have shared with me that uh, you are on to bigger and, and, uh, and better things. So can you just talk about that timeline for me uh, with the committee so everybody is informed? Callum, why don't you start? Sure. Yeah, um, so my, my goal um, with this project was to see the, the website um, update to the end. And so as far as my timeline goes, um, I mean, I can, I'm happy to stay on to oversee that the last section is, is removed and the last changes are implemented in, in a, um, in an effective way. But other than that, that would be the, the end of, um, my time here. Uh, just given that we've, looks like we've implemented and set out 
and uh, did what we set out to do. Um, and I think the the website looks great. And so my my job here is is just about done. Very good, Calum. Thank you. Thank you. And Sam? Yeah, so the timeline, I guess, would be kind of loose. Like Callum said, we're kind of, the implementation portion is done. Um, so what's really next is after we discuss the, the measurement process, um, unless you guys have questions about that, I think I can, I, I can share with you. I think it's in that Wallingford Google Drive that everybody has access to, but our original presentation for the justification of why we even wanted to make any changes has all of the um, the benchmark baseline measurements that we talked about that you can refer back to. So unless there's further questions, I'm happy to answer them at any point. Um, you guys have my email and everything, but I, yeah, I think we can see the, the slider through and then that would be that. Okay, any questions from commissioners? Both of you have done, all of you have done an excellent job, but thank you. Yeah. Very much. You did a great job. Thank you. Very yeah, impressive. Yeah, I want to echo Patricia's comment. A wonderful, yeah. wonderful job. By yeah, really exceeded expectations. Very much so. Good luck in the future too. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right. So um, this is not goodbye. So <laughs> let me uh, let me talk to Web Solutions and Lynn, and, and um, uh, we'll talk about getting those uh, some logos with those testimonials and getting getting the changes that we talked about done and. And then uh, we'll ask you to take another peek and all that kind of good stuff. So we'll be in touch. All right. Thank you very much. All set. And Callum, Sam. Okay. Moving on. And if it's okay with everybody, I'm going to have to go catch that train now. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Thank you, Sam. Have a great day. All right. I think, Brenna, you're up with your college outreach. Yeah. Uh, so most of what I've been doing is finishing up contacting and getting the information I needed out of the colleges. Uh, that included uh, finalizing all the career center information about uh, when their career fairs were, or even if they were having career fairs, a lot of the schools were not having career fairs and either were completely opting out of anything of the sort or holding uh, smaller like coffee talk information sessions. Uh, and that is, the information that went out in one of Shay's emails was if a school was having any sort of event, if they were interested in holding coffee talks, that information was in that email about who to get in contact, what the school was kind of looking for, uh, whether it was an individual thing, a career thing, or just talking about the industry. Um, the other thing I've been working on is with a couple of professors, namely uh, one at Quinnipiac, and they wanted to work with businesses uh, for a student project that was happening in our MBA program. Uh, that information also went out to businesses and I reached out to the Quinnipiac Chamber of Com Commerce and there was one other person uh, Tim sent me to. I reached out to them to try to get them to also push the message out. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think either of them did. Uh, I never heard back from the one person and then the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce, Commerce, I heard back from, and he basically said he had to uh, show it to his higher up, see if he would release it. And then I never heard anything back after that, uh, which I think I took to mean that they weren't going to push it out. So unfortunately we didn't actually get any reach back from businesses on that. So I was only able to give them uh, the contact that Tim had directly uh, shared with me of a woman wanting to start a business with differently abled people starting a coffee shop. Uh, so that has luckily, I think, been picked up by a student in that class. So uh, I hope he actually reaches out to her, uh, but we'll see. So unfortunately, uh, a lot of the colleges have been very responsive, very great about getting their information to me. Uh, I'm not sure that we have the best way of getting the businesses to work with the schools just because I don't think we're getting uh, the responses back that we want. And I don't know if that's because of the types of businesses we're reaching out to, if we need to try to broaden um, our reach to more small businesses, um, because my thought is they might be more willing to work with college students on projects because they're a little more in need uh, than the larger businesses that probably have consultants that they already work with on a basis. 
so Brent, a couple of questions. Um, talk to me briefly about your engagement with Teresa O'Halla. Yeah, so I reached out to her. Uh, she was very, very happy to hear from me. Uh, she told me about the business type she wanted to do. She said to get her in contact with any students interested. So I actually went and talked to the class uh, working on the project and I shared her story. I told them to get in contact with me first before contacting her so that like five people didn't end up contacting her. Um, I heard back from one student uh, actually this past weekend uh, about being interested in working with a business and I put him in contact with her. So hopefully he contacts her and works with her because I think she would be a great asset uh, to work with and a really good opportunity for them. Uh, but it didn't seem like there were as many students as the professor thought who might have needed help finding a business. Okay. And, and regarding your other comment, as far as, um, you know, people not, you know, outwardly, you know, engaging with, you know, on Handshake or Simplicity or any of those online tools that colleges are using, um, you, you said very briefly, you know, it could be that we're not reaching out to the right companies. I, I think that has a lot of merit. I really do. I think, um, you know, at the university level, um, our database is not rich with engineering firms and, and, you know, things of that nature, which typically are the ones that are looking for the talent. Um, it's banking interns. It, it's, um, you know, it's, th those are areas where strengthening our, our database here is going to pay dividends and make that what your, you know, your reach out um, a lot more, I think, yeah. of course, a lot more useful. I also Especially think, because you know, a lot of these schools have very strong business programs. Quinnipiac has a very strong business program, as does Sacred Heart. Um, I think trying to maybe specifically pinpoint uh, schools within the colleges that there's an abundance of, and then trying to find businesses within Wallingford to add to our list that would specifically target those schools. Yeah, I, th I think also, you know, the, the, the biggest um, gap or void in the workforce now, and it was frankly pre-COVID, is, um, um, you know, is, is, is labor, is general labor. Um, so, and it's, it's introductory, you know, uh, introductory to, you know, manufacturing type labor. So I think we've got to, we've got to, you know, get, you know, Gateway's got a pretty good program. I know Middlesex is working diligently to try to push programs. So I think we've got to get some community colleges in there. And, and just by virtue of who they are, that's going to broaden the, the uh, you know, the resourcefulness uh, to some of the companies that we have now. So two things, let's reach out to get some community colleges on the list. And then secondly, as we continue to, to broaden our database, we've got to get companies that are more inclined to need graduate level students. But, um, you know, great effort, uh, great work. Um, you know, it's not, it's not evident that they think the connections are, are hot right now, but I'm, I'm, I'm not giving up on it. I hope you're not, so. Yeah, so I think um, I've honestly finished pretty much all I can do with the current schools that I've reached out to. Um, my next step, uh, if anyone has any input on this, please let me know, would be reaching out to the community colleges like you suggested. Um, Gateway has been very difficult to get a hold of. They only have one email uh, given to reach their uh, career center. Uh, and they also have a phone number, but I tried the phone number and it also didn't work very well. Uh, so I have tried to reach out to them on multiple occasions. I have not heard anything back, um, but I will definitely widen and try to get in contact with other community colleges in the area. Um, and what you want me to do there is just to kind of do the same information I did with the other ones, uh, like their um, career fair information and stuff like that, and the best way to get their students in contact uh, with jobs. Why don't, why don't we see who you get on the community college level, and then let's you and I you know, regather and we'll, we'll talk about messaging. Okay. What about, what about technical schools? I know that, uh, you know, Wilcox is in Meriden, but it's still a lot of Wallingford students, not a lot, but quite a few Wallingford students go to Wilcox for manufacturing and other programs. I don't know if we want to dive into other towns like that, but there's quite a few technical schools in the area. I can look into it, um, see what's around, and look into more of what they're trying to do right now. 
my experience at the high school, technical high school level is, first off, they've got like a 97% higher rate in all of the trades right out of those high schools. The companies swarm them like ants at a picnic. So there, there's a, um, there are connections there. I say a 97% higher rate could be, and statistically, you know, 3% or probably more of, of any population is just not even hireable. So. Mm -hmm. um, bottom line is every kid coming out of a technical high school that wants a job has got a job because he's, these manufacturers are all over them. So I think that the, the biggest opportunity um, in the manufacturing sector uh, with, with entry level you know, uh, talent is gonna come from the uh, community colleges because they've all started programs and the state of Connecticut has invested, uh, as we know, millions of dollars in, inappropriately in my opinion. And I'm, I'm a fiscal, critic in most cases, but in this particular case, I think they have invested wisely in training programs. The, the issue be, is right now is that there's not enough enrollment in the training program. So they're saying we've got an infrastructure to teach, but we don't necessarily have the interest in, in, in the population to learn. So in those particular categories. So there's a, there's a couple of dynamics working against us out there, but uh, I think if we can have open channels with the community colleges, uh, that would that would broaden our opportunities as on this end, we work, work to broaden the database. I think that, that puts us in a good direction. Uh, if I could just add to that, Tim, uh, we, we work with uh, Wilcox and Vinyl. We have uh, probably 50 to 60 people in our current employment who are from those schools. Um, so we do swarm them and we have relationships and we have, uh, you know, a lot of back and forth and the same thing with like EC Goodwin um, and they will be very responsive to uh, to pretty much working with everybody. They want to get their students uh, hired and they're they're very, uh, very responsive in that regard. If you need any contacts at any of those schools, reach out to me. Okay. Very good. Yeah. I'll probably start with the community colleges, see what we get from that, and then I'll move on to technical schools if we decide to go down that route. And Brent, if you if you continue to run into issues there, just uh, give me a call. Um, I can I can I have ways of and, and connections that can get you in the side door with those community colleges. So okay. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask, uh, you had discussed uh, Hubcap earlier and maybe working more with them. Uh, is that something you would want me to work on? Um, meet with them, interview them, see if they want outreach into the community colleges but more. Um, um, I, I, I would, um, welcome comments from the committee. You know, the Hubcap is a grass grassroots effort. Their employment pipelines are a grassroots effort to try to um, uh, or to reach out to to people who are unemployed or people who are, are even employed who want to you know try to increase their skills. And, you know, they go through um, interview skills, presentation, you know, proper pre presentation protocol. Um, they're typically people who are, again, are looking at, you know, not, th not their first job, but looking to take and elevate themselves, perhaps, in a, in a job. They do represent, you know, uh, uh, some manufacturing companies, uh, nursing. They're going to start a hospitality program in the spring. I think the timing is is uh, a little curious there, since hospitality is probably the one sector that is being, you know, uh, impacted negatively more than any. But um, so those types of things. So um, it, it's certainly worth a conversation. Our, just so happens that the chairman of the EDC, a fellow named Joe Mira, he is the guy that is really spearheading um, the, the, uh, the hubcap and the employment pipelines. So he'd be the guy that uh, we can make an introduction to. So uh, reach out to me separately, Brennan, and we'll see what we can do there. All right. Anything else, Brenna? Uh, that is everything I can think of. Well done. And again, your, the, uh, your level of effort is, is, does not go unnoticed. So keep, Thank you. keep plowing. The next item on our agenda, I just wanted to take a couple of minutes and um, um, talk about Facebook. You know, at our last meeting, we did talk about how we're going to excuse me one second. How we're going to take and um, kind of backed off Facebook for the time being because um, we realized that we cannot not allow commentary, and we just did not want it to fester into a um, you know an environment where people would just start to, to chide on anything and everything they could. Uh, but 
there's a there's an occasion, and I just so I'm throwing this out to the committee and, and the SMT as well. Um, you know, there's an occasion with a, a very controversial parking lot in our town center that came up recently, and there's a, a public. You know, there's one particular gadfly who's trying to you know stir up some trouble, and uh, so what we sit and we watch is misinformation, and it frankly just gets under my skin when misinformation is flying and we don't have a way to take and combat it right now. But we could combat it on those Facebook forums, which is where the misinformation quite often starts to gain momentum. So I just wanna plant that seed. There's no immediacy to this right now, but um, I think that you know, having a presence, it may not be every day, it may not be once a week, like, you know, we had particularly, we had talked about at one point, but I think Facebook could be utilized as a tool by this committee and by the by the commission, um, I'd say on a spot basis, and maybe on a subject matter basis. Um, and, you know, if we have to get engaged and respond to some things, we, we do, but um, uh, I, I just think as I play that out in my mind, you know, when misinformation starts to take and influence people's decisions, it's it's just a very very bad scenario. And I sit, and I I sit in my hands and I chew on my tongue and say, <laughs> these people who are spewing the wrong stuff, someone's got to correct them. And to this date, we never have. But uh, I just wanted to throw that out there and and just ask for the committee's input if uh, they'd be comfortable with um, keeping Facebook dormant but the concept alive um to use on a uh, you know subject matter basis i think it's a really important subject i mean i our downtown um businesses really rely on that parking too people don't realize that i've had people from out of town coming to meet me for dinner that have said ah you know parking is a problem let's go somewhere else i don't want to spend you know 20 minutes looking for a parking spot so it's, it's a serious issue and it affects the economy of the downtown area, especially now with COVID and everything, it's even worse. So um, I think it's important to get a message out somehow or to do something. I, I agree with Patricia as far as getting a message out. I'm, I'm not sure that we should engage in any type of a dialogue situation. I think mm -hmm. the facts are the facts. Yeah, and, I agree. And I think if we can get the facts out some way through our other means, rather than, okay, here's the facts on Facebook. Now somebody's gonna come back and say, well, wait a minute. And then now we're gonna go back and say, no, you're not right. This is, yeah. you know, I think, I don't think we should be put, putting ourselves in that type of a position. I agree with that a hundred percent. You're absolutely yeah. right, Mark. It'll get ugly. You, yeah, it, there's, there's no shortage of irrational <laughs> commentary because mm -hmm. there are very strong beliefs and you know, right or wrong is, is it, it doesn't matter. It's, you know, people are very, very, um, very, very, have very, very strong opinions on what they believe. And you can put as many facts as you want, but you will engage in what will become a very public on Facebook battle argument, et cetera. Um, so I'm not a fan of, um, of doing anything on there. I mean, you can put things up and turn off commenting so people cannot comment on it so if you just want to be a source for some information that's fine um but uh if you put something up that someone really strongly feels against you your your information and your comments will be discussed uh, very heartily on the uh, wallingford forum which if you spent 20 minutes you'd never want to touch facebook again <laughs> you know w one other thing to consider too uh from our perspective is uh to put anthony and, and everybody else has mentioned whatever message we put out about this particular subject it, it will begin to form a bias about all our other future endeavors so yeah. um if those folks who disagree with this if they feel that the information we're putting out is biased one way or the other again that's going to um, influence how they look at us for years to come. So, uh, and even the information we put out has to be carefully understood. How is that going to be interpreted by both sides? As Anthony said, certainly, you know, you have most people don't look at any subject with an open mind. It's all about defending your position. So, um, 
Yeah, Mark, I, I agree with everybody. We could be very careful about the information put out. Not, not even putting out objective information can be misinterpreted. Yes. Um, so, uh, yes, it's slippery slope for sure. There's a lot, most people are totally irrational and um, frustrating to deal with for sure. So, so, Brenda, could you address that? Because, you know, uh, the comments I'm hearing and what Anthony said specifically is, you know, post something but not allow comments. Now, that was our original objective, but um, I believe, unless I mis misunderstood, that you're saying we can't do that. Yeah, so Facebook, uh, very confusingly on how they set up their different like types of profiles. And because they've gone through so many iterations, some of the information out there isn't quite correct about what the profiles actually allow you to do. So our idea was to create a page uh, because that is how you can make sure you are the only one who posts content, which is correct. Um, however, we cannot turn off commenting on the, that content. So people could still comment on it. Um, and the only way we could get around that would be to, there's a way to have banned words where if that word shows up in a comment, the comment is blocked. But that could actually cause more problems uh, than benefits because the person who posted that comment would still see the comment as if it was posted, but no one else would see it. And that person could get angry that no one is responding to their comment and then move that to one of the forums and cause a whole issue. So that's not the best workaround and why we decided to not go with it. So we decided to not go with a page. I looked into other kinds of profiles. If we had just a normal profile as you would as like a civilian, uh, you also can't turn off comments very easily there. Um, so that doesn't work. And then with a group, you aren't the only one posting content. You have like um, the ability to kind of like weed out content, but because of the purpose of a group, people get angry that they can't post their content there. Um, because the purpose of a group like the forums is for everyone to share things. So that's also not the best way around. And those are really the three main types of profiles that Facebook has. Could, could, we, could we put some sort of a link uh, or a forward to a different page that, um, for example, our page or something, uh, a different content uh, pre presentation of format that doesn't allow comment and just put that link onto the... Uh, just feeding out information on the Facebook page. So if somebody wants to get the facts, you know, we can present it in such a way, you know, th these are the facts. This is how the proposal came about. This is the sit current situation. This is it. Th these are the expectations and don't be uh, opinionated about it in any way, shape or form. And then if people are really interested, they can go to that and they can reference that. Are you talking about having our own profile that would post that or posting that in the comments of things on the forums? I, I'm just looking for a way to get the facts out there in front of people if they're interested in looking at the facts and without having to worry about the comments. So I'm putting a link on there. So for example, a link to our website for if we had a, I'm not exactly sure how to set up that link. Um, they can hit that link. All there's there, they go to all their, all the information information is laid out. If they then want to comment on that later on in the Facebook page, to your point, there's not much we can do about that, but at least it's not thrown right there on the, uh, unless I misunderstood how the original, the intent of how you wanted to present the information was going to be. Yeah. So with that way, um, I think that would best be done in the comments of a post that has misinformation in it. Uh, and that is an option we could look into having a link to the correct information on like a website that can't be changed or altered and that has some credibility to it instead of just being another random comment, there could then be, because that link would be in the form of a comment, you would comment that link, that could still be commented on. The, the problem with Facebook is there's no good way to just post something and then not have comments on it. So you could have it so the link is from a credible source and that way Hopefully, um, people aren't thinking it's just an opinionated person. It's actually a credible source. That's something to look into. Um, I don't think we're trying to stop comments. I mean, that's the whole purpose of the engagement and the, and the conversations for people to comment. It, it, we just need to control the, 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 uh, the, the facts. There has to be some place where these are the facts. They can't be altered. You can argue one way or the other whether you agree with them or not, but these are the facts. 
And if people yeah. have access to that on a regular basis, they can refer back to that. Well, did you see this? No, did you look at it again. Um, you know, that type of thing. And I think that's a great way to go about it. I think that would be the best way to go about it. Um, because having it linked to another site is more credible than just having it in a comment without sources cited. It's, this is an ongoing problem too that we've always had too, is getting the facts out there. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a problem that's not gonna go away. There's not just you know, special to this particular situation. Um, and Facebook isn't, you know, it's not the only solution. Maybe, you know, putting it out to all the students, maybe there's a bit, maybe there's some other different solution, um, way of attacking this or from different angles. Um, if there's someone who's like a repeat offender, maybe you would want to consider blocking them that also, like Brenna said, might not necessarily be the best approach, but it stops the people who are constantly just doing things just to make mischief. I mean, the problem there is that we don't have that ability over the forums, which is where a lot of this is happening. The forums are already open and running. Um, they have uh, moderators who are residents of Wallingford, uh, and they uh, just don't do the best job of controlling the information that's going on in the forums. Um, so we don't really have the control to do anything but post a comment that maybe shows the correct information. You, you cannot, I, I, I just disagree with uh, Callum in, in a second because you can't develop a cancel culture. You, if you start developing, and I can understand if somebody's being vulgar or threatening, that's a different story. But if somebody has a difference of opinion and whether it's factual or not, whether you agree with it or not, you can't just then say, well, they're being unreasonable. They're not being factual. We're just going to cancel them. That is, that's, that is the wrong approach. Um, the idea yeah, is I agree with that. I was just putting the idea out there. Oh, okay. Um, okay. My, Brenna, what about, could we like apply or, or do something to become a moderator of the Facebook forums? So I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I know most forums, if the, they will put out a post saying they're looking for new moderators, if they want new moderators, normally if they haven't done that, that means that the moderators that they have are uh, comfortable doing the amount of work they're doing and they don't need an extra hand. It really depends on who starts the forums and who's in charge. Um, Cause I'm also in a forum uh, in my hometown and that one has a moderator who is very on top of the misinformation and therefore that forms a lot more control than the Wallingford ones. So the problem I do think is partially on the moderator of moderators of these forums, but because they're not looking for new moderators and you can't really go about being like, hey, I don't like how you're running this forum. Let me moderate instead. Um, it's very hard to get in there. Can you set up a can you set up a, a sub Facebook page again uh, and maybe approach the current moderators and, and they might be they may welcome some help and then form a uh, kind of a subgroup within the Facebook page uh, specific to this subject so that they can moderate all the other BS that's going on around town and all the other arguments. And I'm not on the Facebook page, so I don't know what goes on there, but at least to isolate this particular subject as people who actually know the facts and can moderate in a, in a more intelligent way, they might invite that. I don't know if that's I possible. I don't think you can have subgroups. I'm sure that there's a way of just being like, I'm the moderator of this type of content. Um, the problem is, like, I think it's a possibility. I think reaching out to them might not be the worst idea ever and seeing if they want a hand or if they want uh, guidance and where to find correct information and how to maybe combat it more. Um, I, I think the difficulty is just in getting into that inner circle and then changing how they moderate because it's it's obvious from how it's run right now that they don't care as much about the misinformation or uh, fights going on in the comments. Um, they're not exactly moderating that type of content. So going in there and being like, I want to start moderating this type of content off of this page might not be something they're even interested in. Yeah, and, and, and they don't know what they don't know. I just think <laughs> yeah. you, know, you could make an offer and if, if they, they, may, they may or may not welcome that, I agree. All right, I think, um... In the interest of time, I want to move on, but I think this is good conversation. Uh, again, I'm going to work Facebook. We're going to put a, it's still in pause mode. I, I guess based on this conversation, it needs to remain in pause mode. Um, but there, there, there may be an opportunity out there someplace to, to use it. Um, and I think it's, I think it was you, Rob, that said, um, 
you know, we shouldn't get into a, a you know, uh, you know, a verbal battle with anybody. It's, it's, it's us simply saying this is the EDC's position on a particular subject matter. Um, but when the fur starts to fly, which is something that we're not comfortable with, we, we, we can't put ourselves in a position not to respond to it uh, or else we, we've done ourselves, you know, damage or we haven't done ourselves as much good. So if we if we if we don't want to engage at that level, then then we probably shouldn't send the message out in the first place. So we haven't solved that issue, but um, I think it, it's uh, it's recognized as a an opportunity, um, you know, to, you know, set our position out in the public. Uh, regarding perhaps this local parking lot, which is the most you know, recent issue, but we haven't come up with a, a comfortable way of using Facebook to do it at this point. So, stay tuned. We'll keep we'll keep that uh, that conversation going. After this meeting, I'd like to I'd like to discuss something with the committee. About yeah. two minutes. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, in the interest of time, we're going to move on. Uh, I'm going to ask John. Uh, so John has been very patient, and uh, as we've juggling a lot of other things we have not launched our instagram initiatives yet but uh, i think at this point we're getting pretty darn close so john i'll let you take it from there um yeah so for instagram um this past weekend i actually uh created the account um so the account's uh, all set up now i just need to um finish getting pictures for the for the profile picture um stuff like that um and i spoke with tim about the issue with um comments that they're having with Facebook. And we found out that um, on Instagram, you can actually disable comments on a post by post basis if we if we chose to do that. Um, so that makes it a lot easier um, because if you don't allow comments in the first place, then it's really not like you're shutting them out. You're just, that's just the type of account that you're running. Um, but I think that we should make that decision upfront whether we want to allow them or not so that we're not um, switching as time goes on. Um, and as of right now, I'm, I'm ready to kind of start posting whenever, whenever um, we choose to start posting. I have the messages lined up. Um, the only thing that I really need in terms of setting up the actual account would be a profile picture, um, which Tim, I believe you said, um, you think a picture of the town hall could be a good picture for that? Um, it, the town hall may be a little bit too big since the profile, you know, the image area is so small. Yeah. But we have a, um, uh, a sign out front as to when Wallingford was established. We actually have an EDC logo. So, oh yeah, uh, that, that would that would be perfect. Yeah, I think the EDC logo may be uh, even the best thing to. Yeah, it's, it's just not as busy. Do you have access to that, or? I do not think so. Yeah. So I just let me. Uh, we protect that pretty closely so it does not get used by people who we don't want to yeah. use it. Yeah. But, uh, let, let, me, let me get the EDC logo to you. Um, okay. And then in terms of um, growing the audience, I'm going to start, once I add the profile picture, I'm going to start looking for small businesses in Wallingford um, and reaching out to them about if they could share the account with their followers um, to kind of grow the, the followers in the area. And then from there, I'm going to follow... Um, people that follow those accounts so that we're kind of building an audience that's um within this this general area so it may not be people that are um always specifically in wallingford but people that are in the general area that um the account would have an impact on um and then from there uh people that will share with their friends as more posts go up and then um yeah that's that's kind of when the um organic growth will begin is when um, we attract some followers to begin with and then start sharing content so people will um, interact with it and share with their friends and then from there it kind of will take care of itself as more posts go up. And John, you've started your efforts to start to lo uh, mine local businesses and uh, is yeah, I, I, I started looking. Um, the hardest part was finding the company um, and then finding their Instagram account because a lot of the companies will have different uh, different Instagram account names than their actual business. Um, okay. But it's 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 really not going to be not going to be terribly hard okay. to find. All right, the companies. So balls in my court regarding the profile picture, and then uh, you and I will talk during the week about messaging. So perfect. All right. I think unless the uh, student marketing team or Professor Tomchik has any comments at this point, I think uh, 
we're pretty much set for this part of the meeting. The, the committee itself is going to remain in the meeting. Chandler, if you could uh, make me the host. Um, I'll do that. Okay. And once you do that, I'll have the ability to stop the recording and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, thanks, guys. With that, um, great job as always. A very impressive team. I thank you very much for all your ongoing efforts. I feel as if we are we're running now, so uh, it's a good feeling. So, thank you, everyone. You guys have a fantastic day, and uh, we'll get back to you when uh, regarding uh, our next meeting day. Sounds good. Have a great thank day, you. guys. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Have a good day. Yep. One sec. Hello, everyone. Okay. Are you done recording? Did you unrecord? I did not unrecord. You, um, we have to, we have to continue the meeting. We have another agenda item as far as our budget. Okay. So, um, and what we've done um, in the in past years, the budget. You know, it's we've done a lot of uh, print media. We've done a lot of different things. You should. <coughs> And I'm searching for my budget file as we speak. I'm sorry. Um, and I guess what I'm, what I'm going to ask the committee um, is for the marketing component of our budget, which is about $29,000, um, we will not spend that all that money this year, obviously, because we canceled most all of our marketing campaigns. Um, but we spent you know, some of it in a different way. I'm going to simply ask, the, the mayor has asked us to, uh, you know, to level fund uh, budget just because of you know financial situations so uh, i'm going to ask um you to to allow me to submit a budget that says we're asking for twenty nine thousand dollars now in past years we had a, we had a detail sheet that said we're going to spend this much with the hartford business journal we're going to spend this much with the you know with the naven business journal i don't have that detail because at this point i don't know what we're going to spend and where um, but I don't think it would be in our best interest to um, request less. And I think um, we, as a committee, are very prudent, we're very frugal. And I think that uh, given those funds, we will spend them effectively. Um, um, and so I'm gonna recommend that we submit the same number as last year, but I'm asking for you to, to uh, give me a little leeway because I don't have the level of detail that I've always given you in the past. I don't. I'd like to ask the, um, the student or the professor what he thinks should be spent on marketing to have an idea because it's a different direction we'd be, we would be going into, one that we're not as knowledgeable with the internet and stuff like that, just to at least have their advice. At the end of the day on the budget, Tim, if we don't spend all of the money that is allocated to us, we just... Put, we just uh, give that back into the town's budget? Correct. Yeah, so there's no harm in asking for as much as we possibly can. Have we, have we um, uh, what's the budget been the last, say, three years? Have same. we been the same? same. So I, I think we, we, we yeah, so we've trended, but... yeah, well, exactly. So I think we've justified spending that much and, and I would ask for the maximum amount and uh, it's not as if, you know, I think we've, you've created a, a level of, um, uh, due diligence and how you've been spending the money. So I think that's the approach to go because you, per, to Patricia's point, we really don't know. And to your point. Yeah, I, I have no problem in um, uh, taking a motion and, and a vote to just submit it with the 29 as we yeah. had suggested. Um, I think if you're going to ask the professor or the students, you know, what would they use for a marketing budget? It, it really mm -hmm. is irrelevant at this stage of the game because we got the money and the and whatever we use the money for, that's it. They'll come in with one hundred fifty thousand dollars, and we can't give them one hundred fifty. Exactly. Yeah. No, I, I got that, but I mean, I just I want to make sure that we um we have at least planned out how to continue the work that they've done, yeah. so yeah. that it doesn't get lost. Well, yeah. that would be. I couldn't agree more, but that's what that's what the twenty nine is going to help us do because yeah, you're not going to go beyond the twenty nine, and if we have exactly to say, all of the twenty nine goes to the students, if that's our decision and. The commission's decision then that's the way it'll go yeah yeah i, I agree with mark it, that's a very good question patricia to ask how we best spend the twenty nine thousand. but i yeah. think to mark's point let's ask for as much money as we can we've okay. been responsible in, in the past and if we don't spend it for some reason which we all think that that's probably unlikely we could just give it back so there's very little risk to the town okay. 
And I think, you know, I, knowing everybody on this call as well as I do, I, you know, we are all fiscal conservatives. You know, we're not going to, I've always said, I'm not going to spend $100 if the return's on 101. Mm -hmm. but I'll spend a million if the return's a million and one. It just, it's, it's all a matter of impact. And, you know, we're going to be giving away, giving back a lot of money this year because we just didn't feel it was, it was wise and prudent to go out and spend money when, when, you know, business environment in terms of expansion and growth was, has been stymied to the degree it has. We, we could have said, Hey, let's spend all 29 or else, or else they won't give us to us next year. That's not the way we think. So we're willing to give money back this year because we didn't feel it was best to spend it. How, but, uh, how much do we think we're giving back this year? Um, I'll, I'll bet you we're going to get back in the high teens. I mean, the lion's share of it. Okay. My, okay. My only concern would be, and it's not just to spend it because we have it, but search engine optimization is something I, you know, that's one of the things I'd want to, Ask the kids, and when do we have to return that money? Uh, well, it's a it's a fiscal year is July to June, so by the end of June. So, so we, wanna, we we do have money to. Yeah, you know, we have time. Yeah. I, yeah. I definitely want to know about search engine optimization because that basically is just going to it's like putting what they've done on a rocket ship and just making sure it gets seen. And, and some of the payments, I would think, uh, Patricia, if we were to invest in search uh, search optimization or some other form. You can pay that forward to some extent. You can buy a year subscription, yeah. and and so we're spending into next year using this year's money. Uh, yeah. And that way, next year we don't have to incur. It, I'd hate to have a bill for two thousand dollars that's going to cover Instagram account for a year. Uh, yeah. We give that money back, and then in July we get a bill for two thousand dollars that we could have spent in May. And Web Solutions looks at that as that's an additional fee to what we pay them for search engine optimization. That's how the contract flows. I know that little website that I have with the uh, Wallingford for, with uh, arts and culture, I've already paid, it cost me $250. I paid for the next three years for the host. For the yeah, host. exactly. I paid it's five done. years at a time for the domain name and everything. And that gives us that much more money we don't need to spend on next year, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Um, I'm say. Okay, I've made, I've made note of that for sure. Um, I'll look for a motion then to accept uh, Tim's proposal of a, a blanket 29 without the backup at this stage of the game. I make a motion. Second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? It's been passed unanimously. Thank you, Tim. Okay, thank you. Um, that's all I had. I mean, I think, I think these not... kids are in a pretty good spot. I think we're, uh, I, will, I will share this with you that, um, and this is uh, something I'll share with the EDC next Monday night, but um, Lynn's replacement um, is starting today. I can hear her in the outer office with Lynn. So um, um, her name is, uh, uh, well, I better get that, there. Catherine Donegan. Um, Catherine was actually the uh, economic development secretary in Cheshire for 20 years. Oh, excellent. And um, she retired from Cheshire because they had a, uh, a, an early retirement buyout and she took it. Um, she's a couple of years younger than I, I suspect. Um, uh, and this part-time engagement here works perfect. She worked full-time for Cheshire for over 20 years. She lives in Wallingford. She's, her kids went to Shan. I mean, she's a Wallingford person. Um, so I think we may have uh, hit the jackpot um, in, in terms of skill sets and temperament and experience and no, you know, local knowledge. So um, yeah. I, I share that with you because what that means is that we are one step closer now to me looking for that part-time person so, um, and I've got a, I've got a job description for this part-time person so that I can, the goal is for me to reduce, reduce my hours further as opposed to me stepping out the door, um, reduce my hours further and then have a part-time person come in. And this part-time person, um, I think should have a very strong social media background. And I want to be able to hand, you know, all of this, not all of it, but you know, this person's going to, Let's say it's September or it's, it's May. The student marketing team is with us through May. Well, at the end of May, the student marketing team's done. We need to continue carrying the ball, but maybe maybe it's maybe we don't resume it in September. I don't know. But if we have somebody on staff who now is in, is uh, responsible for messaging, is and, and we, we would work collaboratively, of course. But all of the things that the students have done now that we've built the infrastructure, now we've got a highway to run on. Uh, that would be that would be the vision. Build out that you know um, the database of email addresses. I mean, it's something as fundamental as that. And we've we've got almost a thousand, but there's there's at least two and a half times that we don't have. 
and we should, right? But it, it takes energy, it takes someone to focus on that, and that would be the focus. Build out these communication channels so that we can communicate, you know, whatever the heck we want to whatever audiences we want, whenever we want. That's kind of the concept. So, uh, yeah, great idea. Right? And I don't know if, uh, lastly, Mark, um, if, uh, I don't know if you saw the article in the Record Journal about the town of Southington. Um, <laughs> I but was going to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> so they've embarked on a similar campaign, uh, but they're using a private firm. Um, it cost them upwards of $40,000 uh, yep. to date. And, um, you know, they have said, and, you know, um, and I think this gives, gives credence, and I'm not slamming anybody else, trust me. But it gives credence to the, the the process that we've we've taken here. In that, you know, there's something that's saying, "Hey, we spent forty thousand dollars, and we're not seeing any results. We're not seeing the lift that we had hoped to see. We're not, and and we may not see the lift either. But we didn't spend under, forty thousand dollars. Spent forty thousand dollars trying. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, anyway, stay stay tuned. I mean, we may, you know, this this thing may not deliver the results we want. At some point, you know, we've got to. We, we've got the ability to sundown at any time we want. But uh, yeah. what was my estimate on the cost of this that the Quinnipiac was giving us? Seven. Uh, yeah, I think you oh, said 40,000. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Probably closer to 50, but it yeah. Yeah. 50, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Um, excellent. All right. Can I um, just real quick, if we can get off recording, I just wanted to say one thing, if okay. that's okay. Oh, well, you've got to you've end the meeting, Mark. Uh, yep. Do you have to end, or can you just end the recording? Look, look. Well, she's gonna. You have to officially end the meeting. Oh, yeah, official. Sorry, about, sorry, guys. Look for a motion to end the meeting. Aye. Second. All Aye. in favor? Okay. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. None. M meeting yeah. is ended. <laughs>